Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Welcome to Haseem Electronics. In our last session, we discussed IGBT welding machine in three parts. Three different circuit cards. What were that? The input rectifier circuit and relay capacitors. And I shared uh, my own diagram discussing that input voltage to the switch bridge rectifier and then we have NTC and then we have relay then we have output capacitor it was one circuit card you can find this video the link is in the description for this video in the second portion I discussed the output rectifier unit and transformer unit but here everything is in one transfer one board why it depends upon the designer if I want to make inverter welding machine maybe I will change some design if this rectifier is here I will put here and I will ch change the design due to copyrights and whatsoever I'm no, not going in detail what happens so here in last video we discussed this is in three parts but now it is only in one module rectifier unit is here transformer unit and the diodes it is here in our last video we discussed that there are four diodes that were 20 ampere how was the diagram the diagram was like this in transformer secondary we have one diode set second third and fourth four diode packs 20 ampere each that were D92-02 but if we see this design it have a difference here is 30 ampere diodes but the current rating is the same here in one winding it is using one molded pack and one diode from the second rectifier in second winding one complete diode and one end of the second rectifier so the same positive is from how this point and ground is from this point the same IGBT driver is here same gate drive network transformer and the inverter module I received comments from my friends sir share video from for three phase rectifier ah yes then there is this is IGBT and driver circuit we will see the diagram for this one as well and here is low voltage power supply in our last video it was using SD6834 but here it is using TNY267 we need isolated 25 volt and 15 volt if it is display based it have a display then we need 5 volt otherwise 25 and 15 volt 15 volt for the module and driver unit and 25 volt for relay and other requirements let's come to this diagram now forget about one card two cards three cards four cards forget about 1 IGBT, 2nd IGBT, 40 ampere, 50 ampere forget that if it is not using IGBT it is using 6 MOSFETs here, 6 MOSFETs here that's no problem if it is using 6 diodes, 4 diodes, 3 diodes let's go to the working principle if it is single phase if it is single phase then it is using 4 diodes or it is using molded pack 35 ampere rectifier if it is three phase it is using six six diodes here using phase and neutral here is three phase to take more current and after that the circuit is same after rectifying the voltage will go to NTC negative temperature coefficient resistor then it will charge these capacitors and here we have bridge rectifier that is heat sink mounted these are input terminals for AC 1 and 2 and this point is output positive 
and ground. Positive is through this NTC to protect from inrush current. The current will pass through this NTC. After that, when the voltage level is maintained, then our low voltage power supply will start up. Then it will start. After that, it will apply a 25 volt, 24 volt interlock, and this relay will operate at this point. So our voltage will pass from these two points. These points are for relay. I mentioned the procedure how to test the relay in our last video. You can see the video how to test this relay. Now the voltage will pass and we will find positive voltage at this point. These two capacitors are in parallel and our negative path will pass from this point to this point. It is from inner side. It is through hole pass from other side of PCB because this PCB is two layer. Now come to this point. This negative voltage are going to emitter of this IGBT. The positive voltage from this point are reaching to this point. So positive voltage are reaching to the collector. Negative voltage to this emitter, positive voltage to this collector. Come to diagram. Positive voltage to this IGBT collector, negative voltage to this IGBT emitter. Now these both IGBTs will work opposite to each other. If this will on, this will off. It is very simple working of these IGBTs, very simple switching. Just only we have to understand the phenomena, how the circuit will work. When this IGBT will work, this positive voltage will pass from here to this point, this point, this IGBT, this point to the winding. And now our this point positive voltage are flowing from this point. So we have to go to the negative point. So this capacitor will work. This capacitor will give easy path because at high frequency its capacitive reactance will low. It will give easiest path to flow the current. It's clear now. And in our negative cycle, in our second portion, the current will flow from this negative point. I am using the colors opposite. No problem. Just it is to differentiate. The current will flow from this point to this point and to this capacitor and it will reach from here to here to this point. If we look closely, we have bidirectional current here. In one cycle, the current will flow from positive to negative and in the second conduction, the current will flow from negative to positive. So we have bidirectional magnetic field. So this core will generate magnetic flux. These voltage will transfer to secondary, rectified from these rectifiers and in the output. Here we have shunt, current limiting, current sense resistor. So it will sense the current value. The current will pass from this point. This is the common point of the output secondary. These are the input terminals. These are input terminals of this coil and it is common point of the secondary. It will go from the shunt to the output terminal. So all the current will pass from this metallic transducer and its dropped voltage across this shunt will pass to the circuit, to this module and it will analyze the amount of current and what is our required setting. What we need and what is going in the circuit 
it will decide and it will adjust the pulse width of the drive circuit first winding second winding both windings as we discussed in the diagram the voltage pass from rectifiers and we will take at positive output here is temperature sensor it is BRD it is BR B2D 90 degree centigrade it is over temperature sensor when the temperature will reach at 90 degree it will cut off the drive it will disable the circuit and when it will reach back when it will cool down because the cooling fan is working when it will cool, cool down at 60 degree then it will turn on this drive again it is used to enable and disable this circuit this transformer is used to give isolated signal here it is input primary and these are the secondary sides one portion second portion we have gate drive network resistor diode and capacitor 20 ohm resistor one diode and one resistor resistor 10 ohm 10 ohm resistor and diode in parallel sorry in series and in both of them there is 20 ohm resistor in parallel so it is 20 ohm network and then there is discharge capacitor for gate we have an oscillator it is using SD3525 a7500 TL494 3845 or any other IC which can oscillate or it can use microcontroller we give input from the dial from the variable resistor what is the required current and for powering up we need a low voltage power supply this power supply any type isolated power supply we need here it can use top switch it can use link switch any offline converter TNY or it can use SD serial or like anything any switching IC which can drive the this primary because positive 300 volt from this main capacitor are applied here so it will switch and we will take voltage in the output 24 volt 15 volt if it is display based then it will also generate 5 volt otherwise normally it is using 24 and 15 volt so these voltage will rectified if we have display then this 5 volt will available if it does not have display then we have 24 and 15 volt so this IC will start switching oscillating at approximately 46 47 kilohertz so we will find the voltage at 1 2 3 4 this these numbers I mentioned here so number 1 is connected to this gate number 2 is to a meter number 3 to this gate number 4 to this emitter so we will apply voltage between gate and emitter gate and emitter so this circuit will work if you don't have a good practical knowledge to how to deal with power electronics never repair any circuit for your own safety for equipment safety it is recommended never do any practice if you don't have a good practical knowledge the risk of electrical shock never take a risk first of all use isolation transformer and use series lamp before applying voltage when you want to apply voltage you have to do a cold testing what is that in the outside of the machine there is a positive electrode and negative electrode connect one end a red lead to the negative terminal and the second lead outside of the machine to the positive terminal you will find this reading if this reading is available that means the output circuit is safe there is no short circuit if you will find a continuity here 
your welding machine will give OC overcurrent indication if it is overcurrent indication that means the output rectifier circuit is short reverse the leads between positive and negative terminal you will not find any continuity if your multimeter does not have the diode function set multimeter to ohm the same way positive lead to negative terminal red lead to the negative terminal of the welding machine and black lead to positive terminal you will find 180k around 200 kilo ohm reverse the leads you will find it open if it is giving zero ohm or low resistance that means the output rectifier circuit is short where is that these are here you can test the diodes here connect one lead to center terminal of the rectifier it is open then correct black lead to the cathode center pin and red lead to the outer terminals so all of them should give the same reading of the diode this is our output testing and the same way you can test the input terminal set multimeter to continuity connect to input terminals if you find here some resistance low resistance or beep that means our bridge rectifier is short if you power on and the MCB or the switch trips off then you have to test bridge rectifier maybe it is short and maybe the capacitors are short how we can test the bridge this one is positive terminal connect black lead black lead to positive terminal of the bridge and connect to AC terminal it is giving 0.5 ohm 0.5 volt drop black black lead at positive terminal connect red lead to AC terminal you will find voltage drop the same point swap the leads this is the cold testing without power applied never test never do this when the power is applied now connect black lead to negative terminal and connect red lead to input AC terminals it should give open swap the leads red lead to negative terminal AC terminal 0.5 volt drop 0.5 volt drop this is the test of bridge rectifier if it is working like this then the input is safe and you can apply the voltage the meanwhile you can also test the IGBT it is also as we tested these are the most failure components set multimeter to continuity in buzzer mode connect to emitter and gate it is giving 377 ohm or like this reverse it in one side it should give 378 ohm it is the protection diode inside the IGBT some IGBT will give this indication some will not if you find direct tone like this in both ways like this and like this that means the IGBT is short just do it here like this in this point 0 0.38 0 0.38 uh, open if you find tone B low ohm that means it is short and you can check between the gate gate and emitter it will give 20 ohm resistance that is due to the gate drive components it's okay it's normal from gate gate to emitter it is normal so let's apply power and check now you have to do very careful measurements in this point you are finding 
220 volts set multimeter to DC check voltage at DC it is, it is about 282 volts this welding machine have problem what is that it is giving voltage in the output set multimeter to DC and connect one lead to negative terminal and one to the output terminal it is giving 57 volt but when we apply load when we connect the electrode to the welding point the welding is very weak why it is not producing enough current the problem the problem first problem may be our this portion is not good it is working because we tested the diodes that means we have problem in the driver section what are our test points between emitter and collector set multimeter to AC because now we are dealing with AC between emitter and collector it is giving 125 volt AC it means there is switching 126 volt 25 26 volt so the IGBTs are switching their junction resistance is changing it is working at the input signal you can monitor input signal set multimeter to Hertz connect one lead to emitter and one lead to ground so it is giving 46.19 kilohertz you can test the same as here 46.2 kilohertz so the drive signal is available we tested the AC voltage then this portion is working properly then we have the transformer primary and then there is a capacitor here in each IGBT path if this IGBT is working so our this path from this capacitor so if this IGBT will work our path from this capacitor so we have to test voltage drop across this capacitor because at high frequency there should no voltage drop logically so let's check set multimeter to AC it is dropping 7 volt 6.9 volt 7 volt and this capacitor this capacitor is dropping 64 millivolt this capacitor is dropping 64 millivolt and this capacitor have drop 7 volt so this 7 volt drop at no load it is a question mark it is 685J 685J so this capacitor 685J that's, that means 6.85 microfarad at 46 kilohertz and there should no voltage drop and very little voltage drop in millivolt so this capacitor is working good but this capacitor this capacitor is dropping 8.5 volt so our this voltage drop is not good when the current will increase this dropping voltage will make issue why our one IGBT will work the second IGBT will not work and it will cause to heat up the core as well yes it is heating up with no load the core is heating up check mm -hmm. here is uh, heat up yes without load yes. without load without load it mustn't be yes it should not yes because no, no, no power no power because 
the secondary is free. Yes. When the secondary will have load 100 ampere or more, yes. it will heat up. Yes. The second problem, why it is doing like this? Because why it is working like this? Because our this capacitor is making problem. It is not allowing the current to discharge the winding. The first current is present there. So the second IGBT switches. So that is the reason our this winding, this primary will heat up and this core will saturate because our push-pull circuit is not working properly. Our IGBT is not working properly due to this capacitor. So let's remove this capacitor and we have to check this one the both capacitors when you remember uh, when you replace these capacitors always re replace them in pair The short lead capacitor is outside and the long lead is inside. When you want to test the capacitor, always discharge, discharge. the lead properly, then connect to the capacitor's meter. If you have ESR meter, that is the best solution to test these capacitors. Set multimeter to measure the capacitance. It is 6.95 and 6.95 microfarad. It is the good capacitor because it is 685 that means 6.85 microfarad. and if we test this one it is 6.6 .6 microfarad although it is uh, approximately within range but it have low value so this is the reason so when the impedance will increase there will a voltage drop this capacitor is giving easy path this capacitor is blocking the AC voltage the capacitor Actually, it is a easy path for AC voltage, especially at high frequency. So we have to replace this capacitor. I don't have this capacitor right now. So I can swap this to other position to verify. Connect small leaded capacitor to inside so that we can verify that IGBT is working perfectly. Although it is working perfectly, It is just for checking. Thank you, sir. It is just for demonstration that our IGBT has, are working good. Thank you. Set multimeter to measure AC voltage. Now this capacitor, this capacitor was here and this point. At this point. When this capacitor was here, this capacitor was here it was dropping just only in millivolt 64 millivolt the same it was dropping at this point because every capacitor it is working with one IGBT when this capacitor was here it was working good when we swapped it at second point so it is working with the second IGBT in good practice but this one this long terminal capacitor it was inside so it was dropping voltage there 
So now, it's dropping voltage here. It started dropping voltage here. Seven volt, eight volt. So we have to replace this suspected capacitor. When we will replace this one, so our voltage will reach here about 69, 70 volt. Now we have. Now we have 58 volt. 10 volt are less. Why? Because we have less switching in primary due to this capacitor. If you have ESR meter, I recommend. ESR meter is very cheap. It is not a very big deal. But to verify the capacitance, to verify the function of these capacitors at high frequency, because that in capacitance meter, you can just only see the capacitance, but the frequency response you can check with ESR meter. This portion, we have T and Y switch. Here is a standalone low voltage power supply. It takes 330 volt at this point, 200 plus volt. So these voltage are applied to this transformer primary and this IC makes switching and this switching and after that we have voltage output. 25 volt here and here is 15 volt. 15 volt. We'll apply it to this module and this module will start switching and we will have drive signal 46 kilohertz here going to this transformer. Signal transformer, signal transformer will switch and we will find the same signal voltage is 46 kilohertz signal at the gate 46 kilohertz at the gate I hope so this video is informative for you if it is informative give a thumb up and if you want to watch my future videos you can press bell icon button otherwise thanks for watching and kindly let me know what is the response of this video what is the quality of this video if you have any suggestion uh, any correction please let me know in the comment box assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh